And even as they begin to reopen, we're seeing a reluctance for people to go back out there in many places and uh, spend their money. Welcome to the Company Growth Podcast. This is the Company Growth Podcast. This is Alicia Dominico. I'm your host, Alicia Dominico. Economic developers are often city-hired or region-specific public servants who are there to help make sure that the businesses in their area have what they need to succeed. This can include helping them find property spaces or grants or connect with other people in their supply chain who can help them work better in their location to improve retention of those businesses and to help attract more businesses to the area. Of course, a big part of this is also workforce development. And when we look at how the COVID crisis has affected a lot of businesses, there's gonna be a big focus on recovery. I'm gonna speak with Elisa Sklar today to talk about how we can help with recovery using tools for other businesses that could be out there that you may not already know about. I see this as a critical piece about company growth because companies need to know what's available to them to grow and the economic developers who support them need to know what tools are available to help companies grow locally. Hi there, my name is Elisa Sklar and I am the Vice President of Marketing for GIS Planning, which is a service from the Financial Times. Perfect. We're glad to have you here today to talk about how economic developers can help their local companies um, recover, even expand, grow. We're all about company growth and thinking about what kinds of things we need to be um, aware of, particularly during a, a, the COVID crisis, which feels like we don't really have a an end as to when it's going to stop, <laughs> but it's certainly going on at the time of recording of this podcast. Um, so why don't you talk a little bit about, you know, some of the problems that you're seeing or some of the fears that local businesses, you know, are having right now. So obviously for the small and medium sized businesses, the biggest concern right now is cash flow and access to markets. Small and medium sized businesses generally are, you know, debt averse. They are not so thrilled to take on new debts and many of them are struggling um, because they're either can't access their markets, uh, people, stores are closed, restaurants are closed, services are closed. And even as they begin to reopen, we're seeing a reluctance for people to go back out there in many places and uh, spend their money on the one hand is an issue, but actually to be out in public places to to uh, to patronize these businesses. So businesses, I guess, are shifting gears. They're trying to be creative. They're trying to figure out ways to do that. We're seeing retailers scrambling to get websites online so that they can um, still service their customer base. Lots of creativity happening out there. Um, and, and, you know, a lot of collaboration happening among partners and groups and associations and communities and among business themselves, which is wonderful to see and makes me feel very hopeful uh, and hopefully a lot of creative brainstorming about how to meet these challenges. Yeah, I mean, that's well said. I, I think you, you've got a good perspective there on what it's like to be a small, medium business. Um, and whether you're small, medium or, or large and glowing, growing um, or international, I should say, Economic developers tend to support both in the rural communities. They're really focused on the downtown business core. Um, and they're also really focused on those local shops of retail, which tend to, to be more of the small uh, medium market instead of the, the larger uh, international chains. So I understand you guys have launched a product to sort of help with those who's local, who's open, who's doing stuff right now. Yeah, so this is a new product called Zoom Business. It's been on the market for three weeks, which is crazy because we already have more than 50 communities across Canada and the US who are using it. And the product literally came out of a webinar. We've been doing a ton of webinars and speaking to economic developers and people who work with businesses, chambers of commerce, um, of all sizes and scales, different kinds of regions. And we said to them, what is the number one issue that you have right now and for many of them, even the ones who are normally in normal times focused on attracting new investment, international companies, businesses looking to expand or relocate in a new area, they're now focused on supporting and retaining their small businesses. And we know from data, I think FEMA estimates that 40% of small and medium sized businesses don't ever reopen after a disaster. That's all kinds of disasters. They're not thinking about pandemics alone. 
And we also know that 80 to 90 percent of the jobs in any region come from those small and medium sized businesses. These guys are really the lifeblood of any regional economy. And the economic developers know that. So this challenge is how do we now help these small, the businesses, the bakeries, the bars, the retailers, the services, how do we can help them connect to their markets? Because at the same time, we have people stuck at home who need groceries and want to order in food and still need clothes or something to fix the leaky pipe or garden stuff. And so Zoom Business is really this interactive directory on a map where businesses can add themselves. They say what kind of type they are. Are they a, a retail? Are they you know, auto? Are they a pharmacy or a grocery? And then any user can go on for free and put in their search parameters and they can see on the map and click on that business and you can get all sorts of information. Is there a GoFundMe setup? Are they doing contactless payment, curbside delivery? Is there a new website? Is there a promotion, gift card program? And it's just, a, it's, we think of it as matchmaking. We're connecting consumers who want to spend their money locally and make sure these these businesses stay open with the businesses who desperately need that infusion of dollars. That's fantastic. So can we do a little use case? Here I am in Westboro, Ottawa today in Canada, and I'm thinking, okay, so can I just go on to, and where do I go on? How do I, how do I connect to this to be like, oh yeah, Mammy Clafu Teas is open and I should order food from this place later this weekend too. Um, yeah, so so this is what we've done is we, first of all, we, we produce this right away. It's, it's kind of a variation of our Zoom Prospector tool, which is for commercial sites and buildings database on a map. We took a similar setup and we just made it for businesses. And we decided from the beginning that we wanted to help our clients. We are giving this for free to our existing clients. There's no charge at all. And if they're not a client, they can set it up. It takes literally one business day. We give them the link. The first thing they need to do is get the businesses to add themselves. So I've got a whole kind of marketing platform. It's pretty simple. They need to get the business to add themselves or they can add them on their own from the back end. Then they need to promote the site. And we're seeing such creative ways of uh, communities doing that. They're partnering with their local chamber, with the town, with the tourism department, with the local newspaper, which I think is fantastic because they need to let people know the link so that they can come to it and start searching. And then let's say you're at home and you're looking to find this amazing pastry shop or bakery. Uh, you would go on and you could choose from the drop down menu the type of business that you're looking for. When you first come in, they're all loaded on the map already. So you could just randomly click on them in the area you want to look at. Or you could search by business type, look for bakery, um, and it'll show you all of the businesses that fit that category. And then you look on the map and you know where you're located in that city or town or region and you can click on it and find it and you'll get all the information, their website, their uh, business hours, the conditions for providing the service, um, phone number, all that good stuff. So as we look for, toward, forwards towards economic recovery and thinking about what the best thing an economic developer could do or an economic development office could do while we're looking to set up recovery from any kind of uh, financial situation or crisis, it would be to have some this tool where you could map and encourage everybody to map and all of the residents to use the map to have all the businesses that are open. And they can do this now to support their businesses right away. Yeah, they exactly. And so there's a, well, there's a couple things that I would say about that. One is there's this kind of interesting hyper local moment right now. I don't know about you, but if I wanted to uh, search for something and I went to Amazon Prime, they're now taking three weeks to deliver something. My daughter wanted paints. It's a three week delivery time, and this is with Amazon Prime. So suddenly I'm realizing that I, first of all, those dollars get taken right outside of my community, but there are lots of places right around me that could sell me paint. And they would be able to either get it to me or I could pick it up within a day. So all of a sudden, I'm thinking again about the kind of mom and pops, the independent stores, the local stores in my area that could provide the exact same things to me. And I'm not buying them online on Amazon anymore. I'm not going to Walmart because it's important to me to keep the dollars in my community. But I'm also getting much better service because I'm getting these things in a more timely manner. And we think that Actually, that's an opportunity for businesses that will extend beyond the pandemic and the recovery phase. 
when I go to conferences, I always ask economic developers, how many of you have an up-to-date list of all the businesses in your community? Very few ever raise their hands. That's true in Canada, the US, anywhere that I'm speaking. So if you are letting businesses add themselves and keeping these up-to-date, they can edit them, they can keep it all up-to-date, you now have this fantastic platform for supporting your local businesses, but it's also effectively a database for engaging with them, supporting them. If you're doing a training program or you heard of some kind of new grant or you're aggregating information about business support, you can now send it out to all of these businesses. So I think that this will go well beyond the recovery phase for the pandemic. And I think it really is an opportunity for businesses and chambers and economic development organizations to towns, counties, provinces to work closer together. I think it's fantastic. I, I fully agree with you. The business directory piece um, is a mess and it's hard to maintain because businesses do come and go and some don't register themselves with the county. So even you know the county or the municipality has a hard time of keeping track of who's actually in their community. But one of the objections that I think you'd probably face as someone who works in websites is that everybody is always a bit like, and particularly businesses, they're thinking, oh, why, you know, do I have to learn this? Is this another platform that I have to understand or, you know, another password that I have to remember? How do you guys overcome that? It's super easy. You don't even need a login or a password to get it set up. It's literally just a form where you input the information. There's a little bit of protection because the economic developer or the chamber or the town on the back end, they have to approve the businesses as they come in. So you don't have, you know, the, the very small risk of some trying to hack your list. Yeah. Uh, there's some protection. But then the businesses can go back and there's absolutely no training required. It's literally putting information on a form. Um, so that there, there's really nothing that needs to be done. The website is freely available to anyone uh, so that you don't need to train it. It's, it's literally a map um, and, and a set of cards on the left hand side. And unlike a Google search or a Yelp search or the you know yellow pages listings, those this is, is kind of all centralized in one place where literally at a glance, you have the listings on the left, you have the things on the map on the right. And it's something that a town or a gov local government tourism uh, chamber can promote in a way that they're not gonna do with Google listings or Yelp listings. So it, it just, it centralizes everything into one really super easy mobile responsive platform. You don't have to download an app. You don't need to remember a new password. Uh, it's really all there for you front and center. That's great. And I've seen the layout. It looks, it looks like how you'd expect a website to look and execute. Uh, if you're portraying map information, it's, it is that, you know, that thing that you're already familiar with, but even better. Are there some communities that we should go on to see how they're doing it and how their local businesses are participating? Yeah, so we're super excited because we gave this free to all of our clients. We don't actually even know 100%. We gave everyone their links and and I don't know 100%. I only know for sure of at least 50 that are using it right now. It's possible that there are more because we have hundreds of clients. But we've also had a lot of communities, um, even local newspapers, uh, kind of people that we don't usually think of as potential clients calling us and purchasing just Zoom business because it's extremely affordable. The price is indexed to population. So small towns and the entire state of Wyoming um, can still use the tool and make sense of it. In Canada, the Niagara region does a fantastic job with this. Uh, city of Abbotsford in British Columbia. We've got the state of Wyoming, um, the city of Pasadena, Texas, Springfield, Ohio. That's the Chamber of Greater Springfield, Ohio. Um, Indian River County in Florida, Columbia, South Carolina, Fayette County in Georgia. Uh, we're seeing Bergen County, New Jersey is interesting. They're probably the hardest hit community in the US right now with the COVID-19 epidemic. And they are um, really uh, excited to be setting this up as well. It's really important. The other kind of interesting wrinkle that we've added to this is there is a map layers section. So on top of the map, it's also possible to layer on co daily updated COVID data, um, cases, deaths, th those kinds of things. If you're interested in seeing like what neighborhoods maybe do you, you know, want to go into or not. 
And we give each community the ability to add other layers if they want. We're, we're a mapping company. So if you have local data that you think is important to add to this, uh, parks and recreations, cultural institutions, those kinds of things, then we're happy to, to put that in there. So I'm happy to give you a, a list of some of those links if you want to put them out. Absolutely. And do you think there would be an opportunity to layer in something like workforce? Because managing talent right now is also the big piece of the puzzle. We're looking at, from one of the projects that I'm involved in, we're looking at, okay, well, all these people who aren't working in this sector, how do we reshuffle them or retrain them and get them over here where we really, really need them right now? You saw the Premier Doug Ford release, release something about education workers being reskilled to go into healthcare. Um, I'm really interested in how we could track that. Is there an opportunity for mapping to step up and communicate about workforce? We actually do that. We do that on our Zoom Prospector tool, which is the investment attraction and business retention tool. So Zoom Prospector is actually oriented to businesses and to potential investors. So it shows available commercial sites and buildings so businesses can make location decisions. But it also has thousands and thousands of data points on demographics, on workforce, on wage data, on um, business, tracks businesses and clusters. So you could buy NAICS code or, or or SIC, you could organize everyone in plastics manufacturing or aerospace and look at where those companies are located. Uh, you can add things like broadband access and uh, environmental things. So on the Zoom Prospector tool, it's incredibly robust. It's also, you can zoom down, you could look by drive time, you could look by radius. Um, you can export that, you can share it on social media, you can take a link to the report that you've generated and share it in an email or a proposal. So I guess what we're learning with Zoom Business is what elements from the other Zoom Prospector tool, the investment attraction tool, do we need to move into there and how, like, where, where's the line between them? Um, but definitely that that is uh, that's exactly what we've been doing that for 22 years with Zoom Prospector is those kinds of really important questions about workforce and business support. So economic developers, when things are, you know, when they are focused on FDI and they are helping businesses expand, they must be using this all the time to show investors what the potential is on the area and what they would have that might suit them. Well, that's exactly it. You know, we, we've known for years that nobody is making multi-million dollar business location decisions without doing their due diligence. And so 22 years ago, we were the first to invent this idea of taking all the data and putting it onto an easy to use map. I mean, we call it GIS for non-GIS people. You don't need any training. You don't need a degree in engineering to use this. We sell it on a subscription basis to our clients, which are governments all over the world. Uh, and they provide it for free to the end user. So the site selector, the business, um, they all go on and they can actually do that kind of research to make location decisions, but even for existing businesses. You know, one of the interesting things we were seeing at the start of the COVID crisis, and everyone's got local examples, is suddenly importing things from other countries or even far-flung parts of the country was much more difficult. So people were shifting to this kind of nearshoring or regionally looking for new suppliers. We hear of, you know, Bauer, the co hockey equipment company, suddenly making face masks and PPE and people suddenly looking for someone who could 3D print a part to make a ventilator. So we can ch help them with Zoom Prospector because we track all of that. You can go in and look for people who do 3D printing or manufacturing to discover regionally around you, how can you source new things? How can you shift your supply chain so that we can actually keep that within the region, within the province or within the country? And I think that's going to be a, a really interesting trend to follow in the recovery phase from COVID-19. Well, and it speaks to the opportunities of recovery as well. While some sectors, uh, unfortunately, tourism is getting hit really hard and a lot of the event-based um, sectors, when we look at the, the food plants and transportation and logistics, there's probably opportunities and a need for them to expand and be like, you know, we got to get in and help these people. Is there any way we can put together a team to go to this location? And I reckon that that ability to scale and grow whenever we've done websites in the past for economic developers, it's always been really hard to get that data together to understand what buildings you have in your community, what space you have with all of these, you know, environmental regulations and things like, do they have the proper servicing that we need? So talk to us a little bit about how that could work. 
Well, that's exactly it. I mean, you really hit the nail on the head. And people always thought of our, our mapping platform, our Zoom Prospector tool, as primarily a sites and buildings database. But actually, it became clear that this was an open access community and business data that isn't just about investment attraction and that it's really about um, helping people look around them in their region to discover maybe how they can shift the supply chain, how companies that are pivoting from producing one thing to now producing something else can take advantage of synergies around them. Uh, research universities are mapped on there, you know, like what kind of incredible resources and expertise might there exist right around you that you no longer need to go further afield to do that. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that happening. I mean, I was doing a webinar the other day and someone was talking about how the auto industry in Michigan is looking to gear back up. Well, it takes 30,000 parts to make a car and you might be willing to reopen your factory, but if the supplier who makes part number, you know, 20,001 has not geared up or hasn't shipped it to you, you can't make your car. So thinking about now how, you know, inventory, shipping, supply, and looking regionally so that we aren't always required to look further afield for that. I think economic developers um, and people who are in governments are gonna have to start thinking about supporting their businesses by creating those local and regional synergies. And I think that a data tool really helps you do that. Suddenly people are looking at data from a completely different angle. Well, this is one of the interesting things about COVID. You know, people were so busy. We were so head down, bum up, as the Aussies say, focused on the everyday operations. But now that we are not in our facilities and we're working from home, we have the opportunity to realize how important the data is and having the data at your fingertips because you're not there to witness it anecdotally every day. So you need to have these sources of information about your community because you're not out there on the streets seeing people at events and checking in with them at, you know, the, the sort of local coffee shop. You have to have the data about what is actually happening with your businesses. Absolutely. And the truth is that from an economic development standpoint, your your website is more important than it's ever been. I mean, people are not coming on familiarization tours. They're not going to conferences. They're not going to trade shows. So your website right now is the single most important thing that you can do in terms of supporting your local and regional economy. You need to have uh, robust, analyzable, exportable, up-to-date data. You need to have tools that are interactive. Nobody wants static downloadable PDFs anymore. I mean, that, that data is already obsolete. Uh, and you want to make sure that people can quickly navigate and easily look for what, what they need, because especially small and medium-sized businesses, they may be doing that work at two in the morning or Sunday. You're not answering your phone at that time. So if that information isn't on your website, then you're losing leads and opportunities, and you don't even know that you're losing them. I also think it's really important what you said about the launch of this and getting the community to work together. It's a really good opportunity to make strong relationships with your local news as well. People need a source that they can go to right now of, you know, of, for press and to be able to have the economic developers making those relationships on behalf of businesses. I was just involved in one earlier today where it's there's a story we want to get out to the media about local businesses, and we've been doing a lot of that. Uh, economic developers beyond their website should also be really telling those stories about what is actually happening. Um, and it sounds like, you know, reaching out to the press would be a great strategy. And I love that in your onboarding, you give that whole marketing rollout. How do you get people to engage with this? How do you get the businesses to participate? How do you get the, the residents to know about it? Well, absolutely. We really want to make this turnkey. And we know that a lot of economic development organizations or chambers or towns, they don't have necessarily a big marketing and communications department. And they also may just right now be so overloaded. I mean, people are working crazy hours right now if they're working in that field. So we want to give them, you know, here's the seven things you can do to get businesses listed. Here is a press release template, you know, change all the things that are in red and put in your local information. And the press is so hungry for any kind of news about recovery, any pr anything practical that can give people something to do during a time when we feel so hopeless, so we feel like we have so little control over the circumstances that are currently dictating our lives. So I agree that the local press is cri more critical than ever. And we've been so excited to see that communities all over North America have gotten great press pickup. They take these stories and they're so happy to run with them and to put 
put the link to the Zoom business tool so that they can direct their readers to those businesses. Those businesses are their advertisers. That's what the news organizations count on. So they have an interest in keeping these guys robust at, and uh, helping them survive the pandemic. So I think it is really exciting to see areas of collaboration I'm hearing that from economic developers that we speak to all the time. Suddenly they're working, you know, with tourism, with public works, with, uh, you know, the international FDI group is much more focused on the existing businesses. The towns are collaborating with the provinces. I, I really hope that continues. Perfect. Um, a final comment I wanted to say was that I know you're running webinars all the time right now. And while people are maybe getting a little jaded about whether they want to spend any more time on a on a webinar or a Zoom right now. You've always been doing webinars way before COVID. So how are you how are you making your webinar stand out and, and be really relevant right now? Well, we've always I've always taken this perspective that if first of all, I keep them short. Usually they're no more than 30 minutes. So I think it's very hard to sustain attention and anything online. And we make them really practical. I my goal always, whether they're a client or not, whether they have any intention of being a client or not, is that they're able to come out of this with um, with something, a practical takeaway that they can actually use right away in their business. And the other thing that I've recognized is that instead of just listening to talking head experts all the time, is I love to turn the focus around on the economic developers themselves. They've, there's no conferences anymore. They don't have the opportunity to speak to each other and hear what other regions are doing and other places are doing. So we've been running this very popular EDO roundtable series for the past month, once a week. Uh, three economic developers or experts come together in a room and they talk about the programs they've been running and what they've noticed and what their biggest challenges have been. And those are proving to be really incredibly popular because everyone wants to hear what their peers and colleagues in the industry are doing. Alicia, it's always a delight to speak with you and even greater joy to have you on the show today. Thanks for giving of your time. Thank you so much, Alicia. I'm, I'm so impressed with the work that you do and it's a, a pleasure to speak with you and work with you. 